Welcome back to the Delaware Way. We continue our conversation now with Delaware Treasurer Ken Simpler and now candidate for re-election, Ken Simpler. I, I said I was going to leave politics, and, and I, I lied. I, I forgot to I mention one thing. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to ask about your ambitions. Are, are you going to serve out this term if you win? Do you have more, uh, higher ambitions? I mean, I'm running for this four years as state treasurer with no ambition of going anywhere other than the state treasurer's office. Um, the work I do for the people of Delaware every day as state treasurer is simply too critical. I mean, I, I have had four years to get us moving in a direction that I think is positive, but by no means where I'd like us to be. I want us to be the premier state in fiscal management because I think that has reverberations to the entire private economy. I think it has implications for whether we do a great job in K-12 education and roads and safety and health care. I think that a sound fiscal basis is both politically feasible, politically consensus, and, and it's a necessary reality for us as a people. I think I can do that from the state treasurer's office and work with other people or I wouldn't be running. And, and let's talk about, your, you talked about the strategic plan for Delaware finances and that you're working on that and how, that, uh, how, how many times running for re-election can, can interfere in that. There is all of this talk in, about the Delaware economy that, that every, every year we have a budget crisis and, and, and every year we talk about the, the fact that they, we don't have enough sustainable income, that, that much of the income we rely on is not sustainable. Do you, say, do you see a way of, of breaking that cycle, of making our income more sustainable and breaking the cycle of crises after crises? Absolutely. We talked about it. We reviewed it. We studied it. We gave a proposal to the General Assembly last year. The four financial heads that we have in state government, the Secretary of Finance and the Budget Director that work for the Governor, myself as State Treasurer, work for Delawareans, the Controller General who works for the General Assembly, we worked on a panel that said, here's a better way to do it. Here's a way that's going to make our operations more certain from year to year and over the long term, more sustainable, guarantee people that the path we're on is actually one where we can keep the promises we've committed to, and moreover, will protect us against those events that come periodically called a recession where we will be able to weather those kinds of events instead of dramatically cutting services or raising taxes on people when they're already hurting, we'll be able to get ourselves through that. Um, you know, having lived through the Great Recession, having lived through the tech bubble and the crisis, having been part of the Russian debt crisis when I was, you know, an investment manager, you know, laying down a framework that protects you against these adverse events, putting in systems that make your world more predictable, um, and being able to tell people, yeah, Larry, in Delaware, I can tell you state treasurer, you may disagree with what we spend or how we spend it, but we get the best value for every dollar and we're on a sustainable path. That would be a powerful message to be able to say to people of Delaware. That inspires confidence, it inspires risk taking, and frankly, it's what people want to hear. You keep saying that would, so I assume this hasn't gone anywhere. It went, it went, it, as I said when we opened, our progress is slow, unsteady, but it's drifting in a positive way. The governor was unable and I was unable to convince the General Assembly to adopt it even though we had lots of bipartisan support. It felt Felt, it fell short of getting constitutional reforms that are, that are challenging to do, but the, government, the governor implemented it via executive order. So it means it's not binding on the legislature, but the executive branches are going to comport themselves in a way as if the reforms were in place. And that's going to be at least an indication of how the executive branch thinks the legislature should allocate its power of the purse. It seems almost more unstable. If, if you have the executive branch saying, no, things are going to be this way, and the legislature says, no, we never passed it, it seems more unstable than it was. The governor is going to put money aside in good years and recommend that the General Assembly not spend that money when we're in good years, so we have it in bad years. Recommend. That doesn't necessarily it's mean. It's not binding. Right. But the governor's budget is never binding on the General Assembly. The governor, that's all the governor. The governor makes recommendations. The General Assembly has the power of the purse, and the governor can decide whether he vetoes or doesn't veto the operating budget, right? That's the way it's always but, worked. But, so you're going to bring it back to the legislature to, to try one more time on this? You know, or, I hope the governor does, and I am going to continue to educate legislators because a lot of this is, you know, a lot of it is you got 62 people in Dover. And you really do need to explain things to them. And they're not all financial experts. They don't all understand sort of the 20-year cycle of Delaware's revenues and expenditures. And, and notwithstanding the fact that I can say, hey, you know, all the financial folks have modeled this stuff six ways to Sunday and looked forward and looked backward, and this is a better system, you know, it takes time to educate. And is that's there a lack of trust? Is that why they, they, they oh. think that you're taking away money from something that they believe in? It's not necessarily mistrust in the sense that they don't believe Ken or they don't believe, you know, the Secretary of Finance. But, you know, it is politics and mistrust is a bit the coin of the realm. I mean, we're, we're sort of at a place where it would be great if we did have a little more trust. And I think we do a pretty good job of that in Dover. But when you're doing big stuff that affects the Constitution, affects all Delawareans, 
people can get a little bit wobbly need, and it doesn't take too many people taking shots from the sidelines to, to kill reforms that would help 950,000 Delawareans. So, you know, we pushed the boulder a good way up the hill. It rolled back a little bit. We're going to keep shoving it um, because, yeah, this is a better way to do finance for, for an organization that spends $10 billion a year and oversees the lives of 950,000 people. It should be run with certainty, stability, sustainability, and we should be able to say, yeah, we get the best bang for every buck you give us. Well, thank you always for coming in. As Pleasure. always, good luck in your reelection attempts. And we will put an a, uh, offer right now out to Colleen Davis to come in. And we'll also make a phone call so she can come in and talk to us as well. Treasurer Ken Simpler. The Delaware Way continues after this.